So, hello everyone, welcome to my YouTube channel. In today's video, we are going to review an amazing workstation. For today, we have the Dell Precision 7560. It is a 15-inch laptop with an amazing performance. I think it's this kind of laptops is just great. This kind of workstation are just amazing. We are going to review it and we are going to talk a little bit about why these workstations do even exist and what is the market or who is the market target and I don't know, maybe we can take something good out of it. The Dell Precision 7560. It is a 15 inch mobile workstation from the Dell company. And Dell offers a set of different workstations and they are divided most in two categories. The mobile workstations, which are laptops, and the tower workstations, like I already reviewed in my latest videos as well. So the mobile workstations, they are not really something that you see every day. Not everyone has them and most of the consumer market focuses on Dell XPS, for example, or gamers in the Dell Alienware. But Dell Precisions for a lot of people is still a little bit unknown. And it is okay because usually they are a little bit overpriced. I think this is a very, a very good starting point for the video. Like these more workstations, they are expensive and not everyone to be honest, not everyone can afford them. And the most important thing is that not everyone should afford them because they are not for everyone, but they have some amazing features and they have a very specific target in mind. And today we are going to try to explain what are the, first of all, the specifications and what do they offer technically. And in second hand, what is the market target? Where do you, where you can find them? Maybe you haven't seen any of this maybe in your life and we're going to talk a little bit about where you can find this kind of, top of workstations. So let's start now with the design chassis, with the external chassis. Already mentioned this is a 15 inch laptop. It is beautiful. It is it's, it's aluminum crafted. It is not like unibody like the MacBooks Pros or something, or, but it is only two components mainly, the bottom plate and the top plate. It is heavy, I will say. Maybe this is around the two kilos, 2.5 kilograms or something. It's not, I mean, it's not lightweight and it's going, your arms are going to hurt if you carry them a lot. I have experience with these workstations as well, so they are kind of heavy. So it is not lightweight. Let's take that, let's, let's have that in mind. It is not lightweight it, and it is heavy, even if it is 15 inches, it is heavy. So uh, for thickness, it's also very thick. I will say this is around three centimeters thick, <laughs> which is a lot. <laughs> yeah, I think in the, yeah, we can say 2.8, three, three centimeters, which is still a lot. I think in comparison, like a MacBook Pro, it's around 1.8 centimeters. So this is, this is really thick as well. And this is, uh, of course, this is going to increase the, the weight. But the most important thing of this kind of designs is that they are built for heavy duty stuff. This build, the build quality of this computer, it's like a tank. It's, it's amazing and it's very robust. You can scratch and you, you, can, you can hit it. And of course it's going to get the hits, but it's, it's I mean, my experience, they accept a lot. <laughs> uh, my old workstation as well, when I was using it in the university, I hit it a lot because of course machines and heat and there, and they are very robust. So that's also a nice thing and a nice feature for such workstations. And I think it just looks very professional, very minimalistic. Uh, yeah, it's nothing else to see, to be honest. So let's talk about now the pods. The pods in these computers actually are very good and are very important. And I'm going to explain why this is, why do even this model exist? Because we have a lot, uh, another 15 inches as well in the Dell Precision Mobile Workstation series. But this is the 7560. The 7 is because they are like the biggest chassis model that they have. They offer the 3 series, the 5 series and the 7 series. The 7 series is like, before it was like the 17 inches only, but now we have, we have the 7, 5, which is the, from the thicker models are the 7 series. The 5 is because of the 15 inches display and the 60 is the generation. So for example, we have as well the 5, 5, 60, which is, 5 series because the thickness is a little bit, uh, it's smaller, it's, it's, it's like the XPS 15 inches and 17 inches and 5560 is like the 5 series, uh, 
5 because of the 15 uh, inches display and 60 of generation and this is the 75 system which is the 7 series thicker series 5 because of the 15 inches display and 6 because of the generation 75 60 which i think it's amazing and it makes a lot of sense if you know why actually because for example if you have the 5 series the 5 560 which are the is equivalent to the xps 15 and the xps 17 those Laptops are great workstations as well, are great laptops, but they are not so thick and which means that the cooling system and power that they can output to the main components such as CPU and graphics cards, they are constrained by thermal capabilities. And even if you have the same graphics cards in the 15, in the 5 series, when you have this kind of chassis, you can put a lot of more development in the, in the, in the cooling system, in the thermal system. And with that means you have a quiet system, you have a better and properly cooled system, and you can have a lot more power into the same components, which is going to be uh, represented as a better performance. And it is true. Don't think that because you have the, uh, the RTX A4000 in, in the, the smaller series, it's going to perform the same as this one. This one is going to perform much better because of the, the power capabilities of the graphics cards and of the CPU and because of the thermal performance. This kind of chassis is going to allow to dissipate a lot, a lot of more heat into the environment, which is very important. And maybe this is like, it is actually a very complicated topic, like you already say, so in a lot of different videos that the RTX 3080, 90 watts, 100 watts, 150 watts, 160 watts, which is, it, it's a lot of performance, the one that you are gaining or losing. And I just can tell you if, I mean, this chassis allows a very powerful, say, range of power as an input to your components, which I think it's very important, even if it is not lightweight, is performance and actually it looks pretty cute because it, it is a small but this is still very robust not like the 7 series which is big and heavy and looks big and heavy this looks very very cute i need to say the port selection we have in the left side we have two usb two thunderbolt 4 ports which are all of course usb-c compatible and display port compatible but they are thunderbolt 4 ports don't forget thunderbolt 4 ports in the back we have a, a gigabit ethernet RG45 connection, which is pretty standard for these heavy works, uh, thick workstations. And then we have a full size HDMI 2.1, which is also great because you have the newest generation of RTX uh, Quadro series of graphics cards, and they can output HDMI 2.1 up to 8K. And you have as well a mini display port here, 1.4, I think. In the right side, you have a Kensington lock, which I never used in my life, I guess. And then you have two USB normal, USB 3.0A, which are normal size, and one headphone my microphone combo jack, 3.5 millimeters. And as well, very important, you have the SD card reader, which is a pretty standard feature for such workstation. Why as well this laptop is very important in the design and the ports? Because when you have thickest designs, not like the 5 series, you can introduce the Ethernet port back and you can have the normal USB ports. And maybe it's like, ah, Jorge, who is using USB normals in this time in 2021? A lot of people, a lot of professionals. They are still using USB 3.0 and USB A. They are not always using USB C. And those that are using USB Cs, they are carrying always adapters, in my experience. They are always carrying adapters, which is, doesn't look so nice. And sometimes you need to connect like to a monitor in your company or you need to connect a uh, hard drive from another person at your company and you are not going to like, ah, ah, who has an adapter, who has an adapter? No, it's like, ah, look, I have ports enough. And this variety of ports is, also, is a pretty nice feature and you are paying, to be honest, for it in this series and in these models, even if you have the same hardware as the uh, smaller models as the 5 series. So that's the port selection, otherwise uh, you have nothing else and I think it's a pretty nice selection of ports, a uh, great variety, Thunderbolt forward, Ethernet, HDMI 2.0, 2 USB, SD card reader, I think it's more than enough for uh, most of you guys. This Precision 7560, it supports the 11th generation of Intel Core series and you can say Xeons and Core i series CPUs, which means that is the Core i5, Core i5 and Core i7 and Core i9, 
of the 11th generation up to 8 cores, from 4 cores to 8 cores, and the Xeons as well. The Xeons, I think, is the Xeon W1185 or 1190, but it's the same. It's like up to 4 cores, uh, up to 8 cores, from 4 cores to 8 cores, and they go up to, I think, 4.1 gigahertz base speed and yeah, 4.6 base speeds. This computer here has the Intel Core i7 11800H, which is an 8-core CPU with a base speed of 2.3 gigahertz, I think, which, I mean, it's more than enough. And because I, 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 I say again, because of the thermal capabilities of these computers, this CPU is going to perform really well. I mean, it's going to perform great because it is not. Ne it is never going to thermal throttle, which is so important. It's going to. Uh, it's going to use the maximum turbo boost speed, all the same at the uh, always because you have enough thermal system. Uh, because your thermal system is good enough to dissipate all the heat generated from the CPU, even af at its turbo boost frequency. So, which I think is great. So, in from uh, my recommendation for this kind of laptop for this specific model get always the eight cores from price is going to make maybe a few hundred euros difference but it's it's worth it so let's go now to the one of the most important things that probably all of you are waiting is the graphics cards the graphics cards on this model it can be configured with the rtx a3000 a2000 with the rtx a3000 a4000 and eight and an a5000 which are similar to the 3050 3060 3070 and 3080 of the gaming series of GeForce. They have the same specs, same CUDA cores, same speeds. <laughs> to be honest, it, it, it makes like a so few megahertz of difference in the in the speeds in the frequencies. It's going to be it's going to be actually the same chip, and the only thing that is going to change is the is going to be the drive the drivers compatibility and the driver features that offers the Quadro lineup series with the GeForce gaming series. I think it's great that this workstation are using those cards because I mean I think since 10 years mobile workstations use always the quadro lines of graphics cards that Nvidia offers from the same generation and this laptop here has the Nvidia RTX A4000 which has 8 gigabytes of GDDR6 memory and it has as already like 5000 CUDA cores 5000 CUDA cores in a laptop in my time that was only a dream and now you have this which is so amazing because it enables as well all the features of RTX artificial intelligence and deep learning based features i think it's great and if you put here the A5000 the, the RTX A5000 goes up to uh, 6000 CUDA cores 16 gigabytes of video memory and it's going to be capped in this model to 130 watts. In this model, the A4000 is capped to 110 watts in this model, but as I said, even if it is 110 watts, it is never going to thermal throttle because the cooling system is good enough, I repeat, to dissipate the heat of the 120 watts GPU. And the most important thing, it is not allowed it is really not at all loud. I will compare it later with my Razer Blade Pro 17 with an RTX 3080 and that thing is, is loud. This thing is really silent as you cannot imagine. I was even surprised. I was like, eh, do you hear something? And my girlfriend was like, no, eh, me neither. Because it makes no sound. And my Razer Blade when I am gaming or when I'm doing anything in the living room is already, the fan is already spinning because it's trying to dissipate, to dissipate the, hay, the heat because it's, it's uh, not so thick chassis and this guy, it just works so silent. I'm very surprised because of that. So GPUs again, A2000, A3000, A4000 and A5000 going from 6 GB GDDR6 to 16 GB of GDDR6 and I think if I would you, depending on your uh, so in the software that you are working on, I will use never the A2000 because it is such a waste of device, but I will go with the A3000, A4000, and if you really need the, those extra gigabytes of memory, I will use the A5000. Or if you have a specific software that could take advantage of that specific uh, graphics card, I will go to it for it. Otherwise, I think the A4000 is the best 
uh, equilibrated graphics card that you can put into this uh, notebook and I think it's just great. So let's go now to the memory RAM. Memory RAM, very important on this computer, it has four slots and you can put of course DDR4 and it supports up to 128 gigabytes of RAM with four 32 gigabytes modules. ECC, they need to be ECC memory. If you are Xeon, if you are using Xeon and they need to be, they should not be ECC memory if you are using Intel Core i series. Don't mix the, the modules because it is not going to work. And yeah, that's the important thing, up to 128 gigs of memory RAM. And again, Jorge, you are paying premium of, because of the one of the four uh, module support. And yeah, that's why you are paying actually premium as well. And this bigger series, that's why you are getting it. Because if you are getting the five series, which are not so thick, they only support two modules. And actually most of the gaming laptops as well, uh, like my Razer Blade Pro 17, for example, they only support two modules up to 64 gigs. And when you have such devices that are thick and heavy, you can go with more RAM in some applications like professional applications and people that could really benefit from these devices, they of course need 128 gigabytes of RAM. I will show you an example later as well. The storage on, on these computers is pretty straightforward. You have three or four, I need to check now. You have three or four NVMe uh, slots. One of those is accessible from direct from, from, from the back if you configure it so, which I think is nice and the other two and or three are the other two are inside the computer it's pretty standard you can configure them in rate zero rate one and i think it's pretty standard and it's also a nice thing that it offers more than two because for some application i don't know maybe you are a uh, you are a video producer and you need a lot of local storage and you can just throw more mvme drives here inside and it's going to perform great and of course, this is PCI 4.0 with um, maximum speeds up to 7, 8 gigabytes per second. I think the one that I have here goes 7 gigabytes per second. I, will, I mean, why do you need something else? No? And so let's go now with the display. I think the display is one of the greatest drawbacks of these uh, mobile workstations. And let's try to find it why. This is a 15 inches 1080p display with 500 uh, nits of maximum brightness and it is non-touch it is not oled it is no nothing it's just a normal matte panel 1080p 500 nits they you, you really need to take care when you configure the computer because usually when if you not if you don't take really a good look to the display they are going to send they are going to ship you the standard display which is only 200 20 nits, which is a matte and looks awful. I mean, it looks bad that display. I have no idea why to even even, even include it anymore in, in such kind of devices. But yeah, you always need to take care of which display are you getting. They go up to 4K and they offer as well OLED touch displays, but the price is so different. I, only if you really need that 4K OLED, feature, accuracy of colors, I will get it because I think it's like 500 euros difference and it's already like 500 US dollars difference and it's a lot. So you are you are really uh, increasing the price. But I think this is the best panel that you can get. 1080p, 500 nits, full HD, 60 hertz, pretty standard, but looks so great. It's so accurate in colors. It is factory calibrated and you can use it for a lot of professional applications out of the box. And I think it costs only like 60 US dollars more. So I think the display, it's one of the biggest drawbacks because as I, as I mentioned here, I have as well my Razer Blade Pro 17 and that one has a 360 hertz display with such great colors. And it's also 1080p, but hey, 360 hertz, we are in 2021, why you don't offer something better? No? There is a lot of people that can really take advantage of those extra refresh rates. But yeah, that's, that's what it is. So now we're going to talk a little bit about the difference of mobile workstations and why, what are the features that they really separate from gaming computers. And let's talk about a little bit what is the market target. 
And for that, I have, for example, here my Razer Blade Pro 17, which is also we have, which has also actually the same CPU as this one. But my Razer has a better graphics card. And let's talk about what are the differences, for example. Let's compare it hand to hand, and let's see really what has the difference between mobile workstation and gaming workstation. That's the most important question, and it is a debate. Side. Uh, maybe G is already going on like quadro graphics cards, gaming graphics cards, and it's a non ending story but let's discuss that a little bit now so now we have here my precision 7560 and we have the Razer Blade Pro 70 2021 which with an RTX 3080 the same CPU and this is the uh, RTX 8000 and the same CPU which is the i7 11800H those are great these are great computers both of them this is like gaming computer and this is like a professional workstation computer and the history is always the same, like Quadro graphics cards against gaming graphics cards. You cannot game with a Quadro, which is totally high, and then you cannot do professional work with you when you have an RTX, uh, a gaming graphics card. Totally lies. Nowadays, there is almost no difference. And the difference that it is, at least not in performance, the difference that it is out there is still there. It are the features that I already mentioned in my previous videos, the features that they offer because of the drivers. In the core, they are the same graphics cards that they have. This, this one is like comparable to the 3060, and this one is comparable to the RTX A5000. And the only change is, as I say, the features that are uh, supported for, for uh, some applications. As what I wanted to show you, first of all, is like the design comparison. This gaming Razer Blade Pro is one of the most high-end and premium devices that you can get in the market for gaming laptops. This is like a MacBook Pro for Windows. This is amazing and the quality is just the best. I reviewed the video. If you haven't, if you still have the video, let's, you can take a look to it. And it's just like a quality device. But this is as well made in like with this small design, lightweight, something that you can travel with this device is still made with that design concept. This one, this one doesn't care if you break your arm carrying it. This one is going to wait anything that it needs to wait in order to support the best cooling system to handle the heat dissipation of your components. And that's the design concept, that's the behind concept idea in this workstation. They are made for work. And I can just keep telling you how loud this computer is now because it's trying to cool down the components in order to give you the best performance. This computer is silent. You cannot even hear it. Maybe you, I can... This is like doing nothing. And this one now, now it's a little bit better, but before it was like spinning, it was like it was going to fly already. And that's one thing. Small devices, small computers, they tend to sacrifice a lot in thermal, in thermal and cooling system. These workstations, at least these heavy models, they are not. They don't. And that's the difference as well with these Ultrabooks 5 series that they offer, like the XPS 15, the XPS 17, and the Dell Precision 5560. They are a little bit, uh, in the, the thicker is lower, the thickness is, is lower, and they sacrifice a lot in the cooling system. This one is not. And it is the same as the 707060 which is the bigger brother of this one. And that one also does not sacrifice anything in thermal in, in, in cooling system. That's the first thing, the design. Then let's go now. Maybe you can see now, now this is running the spec view path and look how slow is this guy. I, actually this guy, this, the, the Dell Precision is already in another benchmark because it's already finished. And this one is not even finished. Do you see how slow it's rotating? This is Unigraphics, this is Siemens Unigraphics. And Siemens Unigraphics, it is a very professional software for 3D modeling, simulations, and a lot of things made from Siemens. The, the, the manufacturer is Siemens and is one of the most used CAD 3D modeling software in the whole world, in the whole company's industries, in the production sector. And companies like Mercedes-Benz, like Daimler, BM, BM, actually BMW, I think it's used Katia, and they use NX. And if, as you see here, even if this is the top of the line gaming graphics cards, for that software, it, it's do nothing. I mean, it's, it's really not working well. And you don't want that. Look how fluent is this one. 
with a lower end graphics card. Of course, it's a, it's a high end graphics card, but this is much better in theory. For gaming, it's, it's another thing. For gaming, this computer is so much better than the RTX A5000. Look, now it's, now it's getting loud. So that's the main difference about mobile workstation and gaming computers. Depending on the application that you are using, it does not matter that you have better perform, that you have here better components. So what is the target market of these workstations? As I just mentioned, for some applications, they are just better. They are just better, they are just better optimized in regarding drivers. And usually in companies in the production sector, in the private sector, uh, companies usually buy computers in bulk or not in bulk, but usually you have a partnership or a company a contract with, uh, with Dell, with Lenovo, with HP. And usually the whole company is based on this brand of computers. Most of the time it's like that. As I just mentioned, BMW has a partnership with a computer mark. Daimler, Mercedes-Benz has a partnership with a computer brand. In the company where I work, we have kind of a partnership as well with a, com with a computer brand and so on and so on. And for example, if you have a new design engineer or if you have a new simulation engineer and they need something in order to work, you are not going to buy a, race, a Ryzen CPU and then a mainboard and you are not going to scout eBay or marketplaces in order to find your computer and build your computer. You, are just, you just need a computer that works and that is reliable and it is powerful. So you go to Dell in this case and you buy a workstation from them. They are going to deliver you an amazing workstation, great performance, great support in case something happens. And that's how usually these workstations go into the market. Not for a private person, but because they are usually very expensive. And of course, if you have money, if you can afford and it and 5,000 euros from your pocket, it doesn't hurt then it's probably fine. But usually these kind of computers, you find them only in the private sectors. And actually Dell, in, this, in the website, they offer them only for like company sector. No? That's, that's where you mostly you are going to find them because you just configure what you need and then they are going to deliver it. Or you need maybe 10, 20 of them and then you just ask for 10 or 20 and then they are going to give them to you. They are going to deliver them to you. So that's where the place that you usually are going to find them. In my case, for example, when I do my research for my PhD, I was thinking a lot, okay, which one of these one I'm going to buy? I'm going to buy this one, I'm going to buy this one. These boats are mine, are private mine. And I, that's why I like to share to you, with you this amazing experience of this kind of two workstations. It's a two complete different worlds. And the thing is like, I am a gamer. I also do play games. For example, I, I just finished the campaign of Halo Infinite. And with this computer, it's just an amazing experience, a great experience, a great gaming experience. The 360 hertz monitor makes just everything better. For DaVinci Resolve, you know, to edit my videos, it works just great. And I use as well SolidWorks, Katia, and another simulation software like Abacus Alliance a lot for my research, but it's not so heavy. And I do personally do not use Siemens NX, that is the less optimized professional software for 3D modeling that the GeForce graphics cards do not really support them. I use most of the time Katia and SOLIDWORKS for 3D modeling and Abacus and ANSYS for simulations. And those work perfect. With a GeForce RTX, maybe I'm losing uh, some features like real, like real view graphics for SOLIDWORKS, but it's okay. I have my desktop workstation and my desktop workstation, my full tower, it's a Dell Precision with an NVIDIA Quadro graphics card. So you know, if I need to do something different with a Quadro or I need this, a specific image, for example, I just go to my desktop PC and I do my job there. But uh, this is perfect for me as well. And this could also be as well perfect for me. But I don't know, I'm still thinking, maybe I can keep this one for like a personal private use. I don't know. I'm still thinking, but that's the main difference of gaming and workstation. With this, you can play exactly the same games as with this one. It makes no difference. Really, no difference. The graphics card is going to be the same, so the gaming performance is going to be the same. You can edit video here in DaVinci Resolve, you can use Adobe Premiere Pro, you can use Photoshop here, and it's going to be exactly the same as the counterpart, the gaming laptops. There is no performance difference nowadays in regarding uh, Quadros, lines, graphics cards, and gaming graphics cards. 
As I just mentioned and I repeat, the only difference between those cards nowadays is features and drivers optimizations that they offer for really specific software. For example, if you are using ANSYS, ANSYS is the, one of the most powerful simulation software in the whole world for physical modeling. ANSYS only accepts quadro, high end of quadro graphics cards in order to accelerate their computation time. Graphics cards, they are totally out of the scope for such software. But again, so ANSYS, the licenses, licenses for, for ANSYS, they cost hundreds of thousands of US dollars. No private person is going to use ANSYS. And this is as well the target for companies and such a specific hard software it requires most of the time this kind of hardware. And that's what really come into play workstations and professional graphics cards. It's not because they are less powerful or you cannot do game on them. It's just because the software, this such expensive software that they produce, it is perfectly certified and to take advantage and to work with this kind of hardware that they offer like Dell Precision, HPC workstations, Lenovo Think stations. That's the difference. It's not performance. Let me tell you again, there is no performance difference in gaming graphics cards and quadro line graphics cards. If you have here an RTX 3080 and here you have an A5000, it's going to be the same performance. If you have here an 3070 and here the A4000, it's going to be the same performance, but in features it's going to change. If you, you cannot, for example, here you cannot have real view for SOLIDWORKS, here you can. If you have a 5000 series here, you can use ANSYS in your workstation mobile in order to accelerate simulation in this computer. And this won't be the case. That's the only thing that this really makes the difference nowadays. And as well, like 10 bit color accuracy support for, for mobile workstation graphics cards and just like really small detail, details and features. In the end, those small details and features are the ones that make the difference in between productivity and money usually. That's the main thing. And I'm so glad and happy that I can really show you this here and I can tell you something really practical about those workstations because it's always the same, ah, Dell workstation are overpriced. I mean, this workstation is amazing. Tell, let me tell you, if you have 1000 euros more, you will definitely get one, this, one of these. These are super silent, they're super quiet, premium quality robots, they are a bit like a tanks to be honest. And these ones, the Razer, for example, in this case is also overpriced, totally overpriced. It, it, you can find the same hardware for 1,000 US dollars less, maybe in Gigabyte or in Asus, something like that. But the build quality as well here is amazing. So I'm going to conclude this video with few remarks. First thing is like, if you are a private consumer, if you're a private person like me, and you have enough money, and you really need the best performance out of the device that you have. And money is not really a thing. Get one of these. If you're looking for a 15 inches uh, workstation, this is the best workstation that you can buy in the whole market. Believe me, it is amazing. Build quality, great features, amazing performance, great thermals. It is just the best 15 inch mobile workstation in the whole market point. If you are in the private sector, if you are in the company, if you are in, working in a company and you work for the IT department or if you are a design engineer that are looking, that is looking for the best workstation that you can have in order to do your job. The one thing that this workstation is, is not about the price or the quality, it's about as well return of investment. I don't know if you heard this before, but Probably, I don't know, if you're working in a company, you have a salary, you have, your salary is also money and your company is paying you this money in order to do a job. If you can do your job more efficiently, if you can be more productive and in you can increase your production time, your productivity, getting this kind of devices is not really about money, it's about really about productivity and if they work for you. If these tools, because that's what, the, what, that's what they are at the end, tools, if these tools help you to get your job better done, faster, efficiently, if you can be more productive having such a device, working from home, for example, now, maybe you, maybe your workstation is, is at your job and is there, 
but now because of coronavirus and then and this we a lot of people is working from a home office you cannot rely in a external remote connection to your workstation in order to 3d models or to check the new products then you can have one of these this is a mobile workstation from home you can work and do all your job done get your job all done with a laptop and that's the main objective of this workstation this is a very deep in review of my experiences using workstation which is a lot gaming computers as well tower workstation and i just need to tell you that the dell precision 7560 it is an amazing workstation it's really fast supports a lot of memory supports the best professional graphics cards in the world it is compact it is not so heavy so with the 7 series it is so cute because this is small has a complete numpad keyboard is great typing experience the display probably is not the best in the world but it's a really accurate display and is going to give you the best experience out of a mobile device if money is not a problem so thank you very much for watching guys i hope you like this video if you have any question or if you have or you have any doubts about this kind of mobile workstation you can just let me know in the comments and i will do my best with the time in order to get this workstation because as i said i'm not a sponsor i would like to be a sponsor maybe in the future but i need to pay out from my money this kind of device and these devices are not are not cheap and i do my best really to get them to get the most out of them even use them for my research for everything and then share with you these experiences and usually i keep these devices i mean i don't return devices i keep them that's why i do my research very well before buy devices because i use them really i hope you like the video if you have any questions performance questions graphics cards uh, doubts you can just let me know please in the comments let me know what you think about mobile workstations let me know if you know someone that has this workstation or i don't know maybe you are thinking in getting one of these so thank you very much for watching and see you until the next time